heading in for day four. Same old rough road again. So day four has gone clear and warm. It's going to be a scorcher today. Um, most everybody trooped over, well, in that direction, about another quarter of a mile or so to a micro site. Leslie and I decided to split off and do our own thing rather than follow the herd. Because we figured by the time we got there, they'll have it picked pretty clean. So we're going we're gonna to look around and see what we can find on our own. It's not like there's any shortage of badlands to look around in. No need to bunch up. So we'll see what we can find. Find anything good? I'll show it to you. So somewhere out in this crazy landscape, there's dinosaur bones. It's just a matter of finding them. That's the hard part. Right. Leslie says it's called fossil hunting, not fossil finding. And we are a hunt. So far, I haven't found anything but a few bits of turtle shell, which we've pretty much stopped collecting unless it's spectacular. But usually where there's turtle shell, there's other stuff. We've learned that much. But so far, other than a few chunks of bone and some petrified wood, we haven't seen a lot of fossils out here. And I'm talking little chunks of bone here. Nothing, nothing incredible. So, let me get back to hunting. What a crazy landscape. I keep expecting to seeing a roadrunner come through with wily coyote in hot pursuit. <laughs> Looks just like in those old cartoons. Hoodoos. Cliffs. Be walking around along and the, the ground will just drop away in front of you into a cliff, you know, a deep hole. Speaking of deep holes, well, I might be living up in there. I'm not going to poke my head in. Don't need any toothy encounters. All right, let me climb this slope up behind Leslie here. Well, we found some bone up on top of this little hill. I was sort of poking around, seeing if there's anything else here other than what's on the surface. I'm not too hopeful, but Leslie's the eternal optimist, so... And hey, she's found some good stuff, so I can't complain. Let's see if there is anything else here. Meantime, i got to go down the hill and find the sheath for my uh, ice pick. I dropped it, and it rolled down. So eventually Leslie and I decided to join the fun at the microsite with most everybody else. And uh, well, there is plenty of bone and shell and stuff here for everybody to pick through. So we have commenced to start picking through it too and see what we can find. So I'm, I'm following this wall around on this ledge on the side of this hill. And this layer up here is very productive with micro stuff. And um, I get up here and I see some turtle poking out. And I can barely see it. I would need to carve steps to get up to where I can see. So we'll see what it looks like on the video here. Um, but there's turtle shell going into the hill here, into the matrix. And then over here, there's some more. Now at this site, they don't really want us digging. So, I poked around at it a little bit. What? Yeah, I know I heard that, but I don't know about carving steps. So, I would need to carve steps to get up there. They said you can follow bone into the matrix, but I can't really tell. look at the video from my camera because I'm holding this over my head at it whether it looks like it's actually worth digging or not let me review the video and decide okay after looking at the video it looks pretty broken up so I don't think so and this one over here looks even more broken up than that one did so I think we're going to move on and uh, see what else we can find 
horned toad. Fast. He's on a mission. We are chasing him. <laughs> well, I'll let him be then. Well, we're back at the vehicle as we moved up the road a little bit, having a little lunch. And uh, then we're going to go on and uh, check out a different area. We're done with lunch. Oh, we're not too far from where we parked over there. Leslie and I have climbed up on top of this hill, and well, there's chunks of bones scattered all over the place. I followed a bone trail up here. There's some big chunks, fell in my shadow. area over. I see some more chunks up there on the other side of that grassy hilltop there. And we need to look around this area pretty good. They said it hasn't been hunted in a while. So, what's here? Uh, I don't know how well you can see it with my shadow here, which just keeps getting in the way. But uh, Leslie and I found a chunk of bone sticking up out of the ground. So we did some digging and there were just a few little pieces down here. Nothing much, didn't really lead to anything. But uh, we're on another hill that's just covered, covered with chunks of bone. Absolutely covered with chunks of bone. So, Chunkosaurus rex actually died up here for sure. But, uh, yeah. So we're gonna keep looking, see if we can find anything else. Yeah, I've been up here digging with my feet hanging out in space off the side of this hill. There's not a lot of room. Get stood up without sliding down and get back to the hunt. All right, so when I was up on top of this hill up here digging and finding all these chunks of bone, I was joking about Chunkosaurus rex died up there on that hill. Well, I'd collected a couple of the bigger pieces of bone, interesting ones that still had some of the outside of the bone on them, wondering if somebody could identify it. One of our experts wandered by, looked at my bone, and said, this is T-Rex. You know, based on the size, the way the marrow in the bone is, coming almost out to the outer edge, he says, this is T-Rex you found. I'm like, holy cow. Okay. So I gathered up a couple more pieces of that chunky bone up there. I'm going to go up and look for some more here in a bit. I'm going to foil wrap them to protect them. And, uh, wow, I found some T-Rex bone. Jim, some more T-Rex. Yay! It's like the Johnny Cash song, one piece at a time. Except I'm not putting together Cadillac. I'm putting together T-Rex. One piece at a time. Got a tooth yesterday. Got some bone pieces today. So this has turned into a pretty good day. All right. It was off to a bit of a slow start, but doing better. Got some more T-Rex stuff. Yay. So hiding up under this little bush, I find a collection of long skinny bones, which I don't know if they're ribs or like the processes off of uh, vertebrae or what. They're awfully skinny. Is this still a T-Rex stuff? Which I believe it is from what I've been told about the marrow. So these may not be ribs. Maybe these are processes or something else. I'll have them looked at by our experts maybe over dinner tonight and get a ruling on it. But this is definitely T-Rex area. All the bone we're getting out of here is for sure not T-Rex, but if not T-Rex, maybe some other sort of theropod. I'll get a ruling on it at dinner, and we'll see. But this is a really productive hill. We're finding a lot of neat stuff up here. That windmill over there is making a squeaking noise. Reminds me of the opening of Once Upon a Time in the West. Great movie. Check it out if you get a chance. Anyway, it's the end of the day. We're just waiting for the last couple people to come out of the field and we'll start heading out. It was a very good day. 
both of us found a lot of good stuff. Um, a lot of T-Rex bone, but also found some other bone. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it, hear it squeaking on the wind. I don't know if the phone's picking that up. But I found some other bone, too, that I need to get identified tonight at, uh, at dinner. So, uh, yeah, good day. We came back with pounds of bone, so that's a good day. I was weighed down. So, as soon as the others arrive, we'll start heading back up towards the highway. We're pretty far in. It's going to take a while over a lot of rough road. So that ramp over there is what they call the beaver slide. We had to come down that day to get into this area, and we've got to go up it to get out. Now, we weren't able to use the beaver slide before now because it was too wet. And, well, you'll slide right down it. But it's dried out some, so we got in okay. We should be able to get out okay. It's going to be a very, very bumpy trip. I will try to film it. Take your Dramamine now. And here we are at the top. We've got to take the, fence, the cowboy gate down on the fence so we can get out. And now it's a straight shot to the highway. Well, we're still about 15 minutes away from the highway on ranch roads, but it's a lot better now. We've been through the rough part. So we'll see what day five brings. Hiking in on day five. Last day, unfortunately, this year. We are 10 miles in off of the highway into this ranch. The 32,000 acre ranch, which is, if you do the math, 500 square miles. It's huge, but it's also a checkerboard of BLM and state land that the rancher can graze his cattle on, so it's actually much larger than that even. So 10 miles in off the highway into this place is nothing. We barely scratched the surface. I see it. And we've driven as far as we can drive and from here, it's a hike. And sorry I didn't get any video of the drive in today, but I was the one driving for a change, so. Hard to handle that road and the phone at the same time. So this is where we're gonna be hunting today. Step one, get down into it from up on top of this cliff. Some of our folks here found an easier way the other day than the usual way, so we're going to try it out and see how it goes. So we worked our way down from all the way up there, which was the ground level where we came in. All the way down, 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 down to here. And we found our own little micro site here. This, this hillside here in front of me down here is just covered 
with bits of bone, turtle shell, copper lights, you name it. It's all here. And we're gonna look at this for a little while. See if we can find anything interesting. Some teeth would be nice, right, Leslie? Yes. Yes. So we're gonna look around here and see what we can find. So we've spent some time on that microsite, but really didn't find much but chunks of bone and turtle shell. And I think I got a good copper light, but uh, yeah, check out this crazy landscape. Came around the side of the butte, and wow, this crazy erosional landscape here. And anyway, we're gonna go over that way and check out something right there and see what's over there. Hopefully something good. Well, we're in an area where there is just a whole lot of bone on the ground here. A whole lot. Um, I picked up a chunk, which looks like it might be T-Rex again, based on the marrow. Leslie had a piece, a big piece, it looked like it, it might have been Hadrosaur. So, there's a lot of bone here. Been looking around for the source. Pretty sure it's eroding out of this hill. Don't see anything sticking out of the ground. Went all the way up to the top. It's very grassy up there. Can't really see anything up there. The grass is too thick and high. But uh, it would be nice to find where all this bone is coming from. But, uh, not having any luck. Don't see anything sticking out of the hill down here. But that must be where it came from. It's all at the base of this hill. Well, the search goes on. Well, I got uh, the stuff down the hill from up there. And look at this. The two pieces are a perfect fit together. So they were part of a much larger bone. Oops. Catch my bag there. Um, so um, one piece spalled out when I dug this piece out of the ground, so I have just glued it back in. I'm not going to try and glue these two halves together right now. Um, I'm just going to wrap them individually in foil and put them in my pack for safekeeping. And uh, hopefully somebody will be able to identify it. I suspect either Triceratops or Hadrosaur. Um, just from looking at it, but whether it's a rib or it is a, a long limb bone, I am not certain. Don't know enough anatomy, but... Uh, all right, so let me get these wrapped up and then uh, join Leslie, who has gone off that way, prospecting other sites for us to look at. This is an amazing landscape. You know, I'm loving this. This is, this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Well, over there on that hill where those guys are climbing up is where I found the last two couple pieces of bone over there. And we walked over here, and there's a lot of bone down in this valley over here. Hiked up to the top of this hill... Look at that. That is a big, that's a big bone. Let me put my foot down here for comparison to size 13. And it's partly buried. Who knows how much more of it's in there. I'm going to have to do some excavating and see. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Got to dig that out and see what we got there. Well, for this bone, I have to do some actual excavation techniques. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with a layer of this thin glue to try and hold it together while I dig it out and I'll give it a chance to dry before I really dig on it any and I need to excavate around it and see what the extent of it is if it goes into the hill off in this direction or off into this direction or down far and just excavate it really slowly and as I expose new bone Cover it with the glue, just so it'll all hold together. Okay, let me give that a chance to dry, and then I will dig on it some. So now that the glue has had a chance to dry a bit, I've done some excavating on the sides of it and probing around. It does not appear to go any further this direction, and it does not appear to go any further this direction. 
So it looks like this is all of the bone, whatever it is. So I have exposed some more bone over here on this side, and I will expose some more on this side, and I'll get some more thin glue on it. It's, it's slightly, it's moving. So that's about the extent of it, I guess. But I don't want to try and pull it out until I get some more thin glue on it to hold it together. And then when I do pull it out, I will glue the bottom of it, which is a side I can't get to until I do pull it out. I'm being very careful because this stuff can just crumble into pieces. It's very, very, very delicate. There's a little piece right there. Tuck that in there, and when I foil wrap it, that'll go with it. Out here, these folks do things a little different than we do in Nebraska. If you've seen my fossil hunting uh, videos in Nebraska where we're in the Oligocene stuff, um, we do a lot of plaster and burlap jacketing out there. They do a lot less of that out here. Um, in this material, they tend to take the pieces out, the, the bone pieces out, a piece at a time and foil wrap it for the most part. Um, some things do get plaster jacketed, but it's not as common as in the other fossil hunting Leslie and I do. So we're trying to get used to the new way of doing things out here. So we're not going to be plaster jacketing this. I'm just going to try and hold it together enough with thin glue to get it in several layers of aluminum foil. And then get it into my pack. So that's the way they do things here. Okay, let me get some more thin glue on this area that I've exposed and down here. And maybe expose a little more on the back over here and get some glue on it. And then maybe I'll be ready to pop it out and see what it looks like. All right, sorry I didn't film it. It came out mostly in one piece. I was concentrating on not breaking it. One little piece did fall off from over here. I'll glue that back on later. I'll just include it in the aluminum foil jacket that I'm going to make for it. So, some other people wandered by while I was working on it. And they are not certain what it is, but they, they suspect theropod. So, this could be another piece of T-Rex. We'll try and get it identified later later tonight, probably, at dinner. Have our experts look at it. But, uh, pretty nice find. And now that it's all glued together, it seems pretty solid. This this part wanted to come off, and it, I think it wanted to split down the middle. So only we're losing one little piece. That's, that's not too bad. And I'll figure out where that came off and glue it back on later. All right, so let me get it foiled up. And get back on the hunt, because there's a lot of bone in this area. My goodness. They saved the best for last. Our last day out here. Leslie's over there scouting out new areas to hunt. So, uh, let me get this foil jacketed and go join her. Put all my toys away and go join her. Yeah, Leslie and I sitting on a, a little butte here having, having lunch. We picked quite a picturesque spot for lunch. We can, got a view of the hoodoos over there in the distance. It's quite an impressive landscape out here. Oh, we're going to have some lunch and get back on the hunt. So Leslie and I, walking along this valley where we just had lunch, we're looking for stuff, and we found, well, it looked like a rock at first, sticking out. Didn't think much of it, but this is bone over here. I'm wondering if somebody just slathered plaster on top of something and left it years and years ago. I don't know. It's very weird looking. We're going to have to do some excavating. We may have to call one of our experts over and have a look at it. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to try and excavate a little bit and see what in the world, what in the wide world of sports we've got here. So we did a little excavating on this thing, and we still don't know for sure what it is. I mean, it mostly looks like rock. Yeah, the more we dug on this, the less we really understood what the heck it is. I mean, it looks like there's some bone in it, but it mostly looks like either rock or plaster or something. 
I don't know. We've taken a lot of pictures of it. Um, if one of our experts was nearby, I would call them over to look at it. But, uh, you know, I'd hate to have them walk two miles just to tell us, oh, it's nothing. You know, it's a concretion or cabe bone or whatever. So we've taken a lot of pictures of it, and uh, we'll show it to them and see what they think. Um, maybe I'll try and get a GPS fix on it just in case they want to find it again. But, uh, yeah, we are totally perplexed by this thing. It could just be like, like I said, a rock concretion with a few bones sticking out of it, or who knows what the heck it is. So we're going to move on. Uh-oh. Leslie is having a little bit of trouble with her aluminum foil in the wind. That happens. That happens. <laughs> so we're collecting a few pieces of this huge scatter of bone over here. It's, it's just all up and down the valley here. Huge chunks. So we're each collecting a few pieces trying to get pieces that might be identifiable and have our experts look at them tonight. Let me zoom out a little so you get an idea what's going on here. This area, there's bone, 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 bone everywhere. It's just in chunks, big chunks though. I mean, that's a, that's a big chunk of bone over there. It's a big chunks of bone up there. There's bone everywhere. Holy cow, big chunks down there. Where in the world's it all coming from? I guess gonna have to climb up and see what's up there. It's all coming down the hill. Huh, I've never seen such a concentration of bone before in my uh, fossil hunting career. Leslie says theropod bone and I concur. I also saw some um, Hadrosaur bone in amongst this stuff, so it's probably just a big bone bed, but still We need to look around I need to get climbing if I need to way up this hill Okay, so I climbed up the hill and I think I found the source of all the bone somebody dug something out of here in the past a few years ago at least probably The bone trail leads right up to this divot in the hill where somebody dug something out so I'm sure we're a little late to the party. Somebody else followed this massive bone trail up the hill and dug something out of here in the past. So don't know what. We should probably poke around and see and maybe collect a few of these big chunks of bone. I mean, that's a big chunk right there. Oh, Leslie says that's her chunk. Pardon me. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to collect a few of these pieces and maybe, I don't know, poke around in this hill. If there's one thing coming out of the hill, maybe there's more. Gotta look. That's what we're here for. So we just got word over the radio that people are hearing thunder. We personally didn't. But the uh, smoke from the Canadian wildfires is so thick, you can't even see the clouds hardly up there. And it is getting awfully dark, darker than just from the smoke, so there may be a storm moving in. We are heading back in the general direction of the way we came in. We've got a long walk to get to the base of the cliff. We had to come down to get down here, and then a long climb up that cliff. Climbing that cliff might be pert near impossible if it's wet. It'll be slippery, so... We're going to start hiking our way back in that general direction, just in case we got to get up it in a hurry. Well, the thunder got loud, and we got uh, word over the radio that there was hail coming, and we needed to find shelter. Well, good luck with that out here. Um, it started raining, but only a little bit, just enough for us to put our raincoats on and get hot underneath them, and then it stopped. Looks like the storm may have skipped to the west of us and done nothing but dump a little bit of sprinkling rain on us. So Leslie and I are back to hunting. Got our raincoats on. Probably going to come off soon because they're hot. And uh, we're back to hunting. There's a microsite that runs up this hill. There's lots of little pieces of bone. There's found a garfish scale. There's turtle. So 
looking around see if we can find some teeth or anything this is close to our egress the way we get out in case we do need to try and evacuate up that hill in a hurry otherwise we could just spend some time here until it's time to quit for the day so let me get to looking back wandering through the hoodoos and the strange rock formations we're going to sort of hunt our way out of here head over to where we, we head over to where we can get up and back out of this valley and over to where the vehicles are parked it's getting late in the day hopefully we'll find something along the way we're not in any rush taking our time and look at the country over thoroughly as we go climbed back up out of the valley and still got a bit of a hike back to the trucks but I think it was a really good last day out here. I thoroughly enjoyed it, found some good stuff, had a really good time. Highly recommend it, highly recommend it. So this was our last day out here fossil hunting in Montana and I think it was a really good day. We had a lot of fun. This was this was amazing, the spot they took us to today down in that valley. Never seen anything like it. There is bone everywhere. And we barely scratched the surface. We barely did. I mean, there were about, I don't know, 15 of us down there, maybe? Uh, we 15 could scour that valley for months and not see everything, I'm sure. So, got some more chunks of T-Rex in my pack. Some more chunks of Hadrosaur. Um, some chunks I need to have identified. And... Uh, you know, just it was a great time. Fossil hunting, you'll love it. I mean, it's the hardest you'll ever work and the most fun you'll ever have. Both. So if you ever get a chance to go out on one of these expeditions, do it. Plus you get to travel. I'd never been to Montana before. But now I've spent a week in Montana and I love this place. Even with the Canadian smoke, it's still great. So I hope you enjoyed this series of videos on fossil hunting in Montana. If so, give them a like, give them a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more fossil hunting videos and videos and all kinds of stuff. And check out my uh, second channel too, Electric Geek 64. If you are at all interested in electronics or retro computing, you may find something of interest there for you. And I'll see you in the next video from somewhere in the world. Bye.